All right. Uh, very excited to have our panelists here. We're hosting a, a workshop uh, for funding jobs during the pandemic time. Um, and first, uh, just some ground rules uh, for the participant. Please mute your microphone. Uh, if you have questions, you can raise your hand or type in, in the chat box. Um, but there will be dedicated question and answer session. So uh, just hold on your questions if you could um, during the panel discussion. In terms of uh, the panel discussion, uh, we can let Lauren go first. She's our career uh, advisor. She can talk general about job search. Then for our panelists, uh, we can go by um, last name alphabetically. Um, so, um, sorry, um, Patel, you, you got to be the last. <laughs> uh, with that said, um, Let's get started. So first, let me just introduce, introduce our panelists. Uh, so here, uh, here they are. And uh, fortunately, this uh, image lineup is uh, decided by the Microsoft PowerPoint AI algorithm. So I have no control. So it just randomly put the faces together. But here we are. Uh, the first gentleman here uh, is Justin Brand. He graduated from the MSIT, uh, I believe, 2019, right? Yes, that's correct. Currently, is working uh, in Google as a financial uh, analytic developer. Then we have Preeti Agrawal. Preeti uh, graduated in 2016. Uh, currently, is senior software uh, developer at Home Depot. And also we have uh, Stephen uh, Ferguson. Stephen um, graduated in 2013. Uh, currently is the CIO of the Technical College System of Georgia. And next we have Tamara um, Johnson, also 2019 graduate. Um, currently she is cyber risk advisor uh, at Deloitte. And also we have Lauren uh, Higgeden, our career um, and internship advisor from KFCO Department of Career Planning and Development. Lastly, but not least, uh, Sabarina Patel. Uh, she is she's not our alumni, but she is an experienced manager, uh, cyber risk manager from Deloitte. All right. So very excited to have our panelists here to share their experience about uh, career development, about funding uh, tips for funding jobs. So without further ado, uh, how about uh, Lauren? You want to kick it off? Yes, thank you so much and thank you for the introduction. I'm very happy to be here um, and to get to speak with all of you. So like we mentioned, I am a career and internship advisor and also a certified career coach working for career planning and development. And I actually started working in career services uh, my freshman year of college. I went to Barry College, which is a small school in Rome, Georgia. And I was a part of a sort of work-based scholarship program. So I began as an office assistant in Barry's small career center. And I worked very closely with our director and I kind of started to realize that I wanted to stay in career services when she first told a story to a group of students. And it's a very brief kind of mythical story about a man who lived in a village. And all his life, he wanted to meet the greatest general who ever lived. And he went and lived a wonderful life, but he never got to meet the best general that ever lived. And so one day he passed on to the next life and he got to the pearly gates and he asked St. Peter, St. Peter, can you please show me who was the greatest general that ever lived? And St. Peter pointed to a man and said, that gentleman over there. And the person said, no, that's not the greatest general who ever lived. That is a 
shoe cobbler who lived in my home village. I knew him my entire life. And he said, yes, but had he gone into the military, he would have been the greatest general who ever lived. And that story really spoke to me and kind of ignited my passion, so to speak, for walking students through the job search process, the career planning process. It really is a journey and our office has excellent resources for students to be able to secure a position or an internship that they are really interested in and that can be a great puzzle piece in their resume to helping them reach some of their goals. So some of the resources that we offer are free career advising. So you can meet with the advisor for your college at any point in the semester and all you have to do is log into Handshake, which you should have Handshake downloaded and you know create your profile. It's similar to LinkedIn, but it's specific more to our university. So creating an account in Handshake and then you can schedule events with our office through there. You can also schedule mock interviews with our office, which is a great practice because you will walk through an interview with an advisor as if it was a real interview and the whole thing is being recorded. So then at the end of the interview, you get to replay your interview with the advisor and go over some points of improvement that you might have which is very eye-opening because you might have a great idea of what you think you are like in an interview, but until you see the recording of it, you might not realize what your nervous tics are or the kinds of questions that make you stumble. So I do recommend a mock interview. It's great practice and it's free to you like all of our services are. We also offer U-Science, which is a great career assessment that combines Myers-Briggs, strong interest inventory, and also some other skills aptitudes and assessments. And that resource not only will show you beneficial careers, beneficial majors, minors, but it also provides you with a list of words to describe yourself so that when you go into an interview or you're giving an elevator pitch to an employer at a career fair, you know what to say about yourself. And you won't just be saying general words like you're a team player, you're a leader, and you're a people person. That's what we hear in interviews all the time, right? So using you science, you can come up with some interesting descriptive words to describe who you are as a worker to an employer. Like there's certain words like, are you a liaison? Do you work well in a team? Are you an individualist? Are you a brainstormer? Those are the kinds of words that we're really looking for in interviews and in resumes and cover letters, because that's how you distinguish yourself. Vocabulary is very important in the job search process because the words that you use to frame yourself are the words that the employer will keep in mind. And if you give them general or common words, they'll think you're a general or a common applicant. But if you can come up with really awesome concrete examples or stories about yourself to show how you're different from these other people on the screen or the other people in your classroom Zoom meetings, then that's how you can really stand out to an employer. We do have our STEM career fair coming up in February. That's the end of February. And I believe it's the, the 24th and the 25th. So we have a two day STEM career fair that you can attend virtually, of course. And then also we have other events throughout the year, uh, networking events, career exploration nights. We had a career exploration night of technology earlier in the semester. And we invite employers there and we do a sort of round robin, almost speed dating style of networking with employers and rotating that way. So I do recommend those. If you were interested in an internship, uh, we provide those services as well. Uh, the College of Computing has an internship networking night that's really successful. 
Um, and we also have a document called the job search checklist. So if you feel kind of overwhelmed and you're not even really sure where to begin, this checklist would be that literal step one for someone that just doesn't even have a resume, doesn't know what kind of job that they want to do. And you can walk through that checklist and make sure that you have everything to be prepared for a successful job hunt and you know what kind of things you need to be researching so that you can go into Handshake and go into our job board and begin searching for positions that you would be a good applicant for. So that is my overview of career planning and development. And the biggest point that I want to emphasize is just that we are a free resource for you. I think technically you pay for us through your activities fee or you know tuition somehow. So if that makes you feel more motivated to use our office, then think of it that way for sure, because we're super happy to help you. We do have drop-in advising on Thursdays, and we just want to be here for you. So we'll meet you wherever you're at. You just need to send that initial email or schedule an initial appointment, and then we can go over your resume, your cover letter, um, any questions that you have about a position, we can help you from there. And if you find that one advisor wasn't able to answer your question, we have other advisors with different experiences and backgrounds, whether it be in the military or in other fields before being an advisor, they all have great insights. So definitely use our office and I'm happy to answer questions and I'll also be putting my email in the chat. So if you wanna email me later on, happy to answer questions that way too. Thank you, Lauren. It uh, will be great if you can share all the resources you mentioned in the chat box, also your contact information. Okay, uh, thank you, Lauren. Um, next, um, I see Pretty. you want to share, discuss about your experience? Yeah, thank you so much. Jeff. I think you recently just changed your job, right? I did, right, right. So my experience is pretty fresh. So <laughs> I'm literally coming from experience. So I would like to share some key points that I I uh, came across while doing my job search in the pandemic time, which is so very different than what we experience in the current time. So let me first just introduce myself. I'm Preeti Agarwal. And um, just a little bit of correction, I, uh, graduated from the MSIT program in the year 2017 and um, let me first begin thanking uh, Dr. Lee for organizing this workshop and giving me an opportunity to share my experience with everyone. Uh, and, uh, Brady, can I have uh, just one moment? I yes. think there's some noise going on so everyone else uh, if you could, could please uh, mute your mic microphone that would be uh, helpful. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, please resume, uh, Pretty. Am I fine? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah, so thank you for this opportunity to share my experience with all of you. So currently I am working with Home Depot as a senior full stack developer. And before joining Home Depot, I was working with ADP as a senior application developer. And um, I too was affected by the COVID layoffs a couple of months ago. And so here I am sharing my experience and my, my anecdotes that I've picked along the way uh, through the job search in the pandemic time, which is so very unique, uh, which we experience in the normal time. So um, I want to start uh, by giving a brief introduction about how I began my journey in IT. So um, I started as an associate software engineer and uh, I chose programming as my career because it was upcoming and it was a pretty rewarding career to begin with. And um, I have in total 10 years of IT experience and I have worked in several domains like banking, health, telecommunications, payrolls, and now I'm working in the retail sector. 
so i'm coming from a lot of experience and in between i also changed uh, like my roles experimenting from uh, a programming to business analyst and then back to programming so um uh, while I was studying uh, in KSU doing my MSIT program, I got the opportunity to tap uh, my internship with AVP. And um, I interned with them for two months. And AVP was like a boot camp for me. I networked immensely while I was there. I learned a lot of technologies. And by the time I left ADP, I had networked with almost half of the people on the floor. And that was the key for bagging me the job in ADP. So while I was studying itself, I got the offer from ADP and I was able to join immediately after completing my course with ADP. So um, with ADP, I was almost for three years. And uh, when uh, and I, I learned a lot of technologies while I was there in payrolls. Um, it's a very tech savvy company. And it's a very stable company too. So when COVID hit and uh, layoffs happened, we were not expecting that. At least I wasn't expecting because ADP is a very stable company. And that taught me a lesson, like never to take anything for granted. And um, this was quite a shock because um, the budget cuts were happening. The projects that I was, the project that I was working in, it uh, ended and uh, several people were laid off. I was one of them who was affected. And this came quite as a, as a shock to me. You know, I wasn't expecting, wasn't ready. So, um, and being on H-1B visa, which is a work status visa was again a challenge, which most of our students, uh, I think they can correlate with when you are on a work visa or you're looking for a job. So it's a very, tense kind of situation because you are on a stipulated time period of almost 60 days wherein you have to find and also start a job within those 60 days and uh, faced with the pandemic challenge and on top of it there was a pool of applicants like if you apply for one job there will be like 200 people plus that will be applying for the same job and even after giving the interview and the interviewing uh, interviewer also told me that they liked me, but they went out shopping. They were like, we have so many people out there. Why not interview everybody? So in many cases I had interviewed and they put me on hold. They were like, we'll get back to you. It took me almost like uh, one and a half months or two months for them to come back with an offer. So. So that is the situation out here, which the students are facing because there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of pool. 50 plus million people are out of jobs. So in itself is a very challenging situation. But um, I had that goal in mind that I have to find a job within the 60 days. So um, I approached my seniors, like how to go about this job, like job hunt. So they advised me the first thing to do is leave everything work on your resume first thing work on your resume like don't even attend to calls from any recruiter which was very hard for me but um for i spent more than two days revamping my resume um uh, it i literally restructured it looked at several resumes i looked at different job descriptions i was told to look at different job descriptions and pick the common keywords in those job descriptions and put them in the resume because now we are in a virtual kind of an environment here we have to give the interviewer the dots to connect he doesn't have the time to connect it for us we don't have the flexibility to go to the job site to give an interview or have that personal connection we have to do that preparation beforehand. So we have to make our resume so strong that it matches so many key points that the job description has that our resume just passes the first step. That is picking up the resume through the search engine. Second, I would advise the students is that um, also network a lot. Tap into the people who who have the power to take decision or who know someone who has the power to take decision like a hiring manager or an HR. 
so these are the people that you should always like if you have the ability and if you know someone they should be your first uh, go to people because uh, when you apply a job in a job portal which is natural you are competing with hundreds of thousands of people in that same job portal but if you know a hiring manager that person can cut through and bypass all that competition for you that person can refer you directly to the person who can take a decision and you might land with an interview very fast which you are which i was actually looking forward to in my situation so in this case i uh, actually tapped into one of the ksu career fairs i had a lot of contacts that i had kept in contact with in linkedin with all of the hiring managers and technical recruiters so i tapped into a couple of them and one of them actually quickly got me an interview because they knew me before and uh, i was able to appear for the interview it was a great learning experience it was a stepping stone for me and uh, later uh, a job offer did come but it came like almost like when i had started with home depot but it did come uh, so to begin it with it was a good uh, like moral boost because when you are floating out the resume is you are not getting any uh, response it can be really a deterrent you know um to your morale so i would really advise to always keep up your morale keep on searching do not give up and networking is the first key to start with so leverage your uh, your existing network to begin and to build it from there and uh, contact your peers your classmates your faculty members your uh teachers and uh former bosses that you have worked with so these are the people who know you personally the interns that you have worked with and these are the people that would actually you know refer you uh like with a personal touch to whoever can you know uh, they can get the resume through too so there is a personal touch to that so and um Uh, so i would always also advise to really revamp your linkedin because after the job the job portal sites the next thing that uh, is most relevant and in my case it was heavily dependent in getting me a job was a linkedin profile so please uh, have a well put together linkedin profile which has a proper heading has a background it has a brief summary of what you uh what you're looking for because the recruiters they don't have time to go through everything so they look at your summary the first thing secondly all the roles that you have worked a brief summary there also uh what roles you had done and also if the people that you have worked with uh if you could also request them to write recommendations for you on linkedin because that carry a lot of weightage they look at the recommendations how your attitude has been within the job how you conducted yourself did you do your job are you are even people willing to you know recommend you so that also goes a long way so those are the people that you have worked with you can leverage that just request them to write a recommendation for you also uh, ask people if they can endorse you for the skills write your um, like the latest skills that are prevalent that the uh, um, the recruiters are looking forward to so like i was a full stack de- developer sorry um so um i had the front end and the back end skill sets so i i wrote those skill sets which are prevalent like react uh, in the front end and the java in the back end and several other technologies uh, the tools that are there so please write that on your uh, linkedin because that's the first point where the recruiters actually scrutinize your uh, resume and um, also build up your network in the sense that uh, uh reach out to people that you want to connect with and connect to the communities that are like minded so i would also encourage you to attend a lot of webinars and uh, also attend a lot of professional uh, meetups join them make a personal brand for yourself write blogs be noticed be out there and uh if you learn something new te- teach that 
to somebody else because when you teach someone you actually grasp that thing more and um, how much ever you give it it always comes back to you so write those blogs float it out there have that brand of yours out there so people should know you it like this was the the advice that i got from one of the professionals that i was talking to i was seeking advice from that next time around you should not be seeking the recruiter should be running after you that strong brand you should have so um so that way um i would like to also um recommend that uh, uh reach out to the maximum recruiters on the linkedin and um also uh, drop in your resumes on the job websites like dice career builder monster.com there are many and um also subscribe to the job alerts so the one of the habits that i uh, had inculcated at that point of time was the moment i would get a job i would apply to it asap don't wait on it apply it second um uh, suggestion i would like to give if you are confused about a job that should i apply to it or not i would say anyway go ahead and apply for it if it is even near about to your skill set apply because getting an interview in itself is a big achievement in itself and interviewing is is also skill building so it would definitely add to your experience and you never know i mean if you are interviewing with the interviewer and they like your attitude they think you are smart enough you can carry out the job you can get the job so do not do not discount yourself do not stop anywhere do not say okay this seems beyond me give it a shot you never know and uh, also uh, because uh, i i believe that uh, most of the skills most of the ancillary skills you learn on the job so whatever is there in the job description um i have seen sometimes it's bit exaggerated also you cannot have all the skills out there so um i was joking like it's almost like a superwoman kind of a uh, job description so that is why i'm saying that don't don't give up don't discount yourself just go in out there because many a time there are there are different perspective of interviewer you don't know what they have in mind they look they might be looking for a person who is eager to learn who is good into communication who is a problem solver and who is a good team player if you match all those dots so there is no way i mean if the he might be willing to hire you so don't hold up there and um always like uh, if you are appearing for the job interview dress the part relax always have like a, a clear surroundings around you look at the camera and talk and if preferable like keep your background totally clear and uh, some 5 to 10 minutes before you know to avoid last minute hassle and um and i would i would just say like at the end of the interview you should be like you should convince the interviewer that you want the job and you have the you are confident enough of your abilities to carry out the job like you don't have to be a google to know everything you should be smart enough that you should be able to find out and get the job done and always practice your questions there are certain set of questions that are always repetitive of all of the interviewers one of them is tell me about yourself so they are not asking about what you do at your home who is there at your home or what's your dog's name not not these things they are looking forward to what is in in it for me if i hire you and what value do you bring to the table why should i hire you give me the reason so be ready with all of your accomplishments have it written down there so you should be you should get an opportunity wherever you get the opportunity just stick those uh, like those accomplishments of yours because this is what they want to see what have you accomplished and um, 
and uh, um, since it's a virtual environment and uh, most of the people who interview and which i also experienced when i was interviewing with nike it was at the end of the day after their work that they were interviewing me so the attention span at that point of time is very less and since you're in a virtual environment you have to be very precise you have to always keep on a conversation with the interviewer so that they don't drift off anywhere so do ask them questions in between so that it's like a you know back and forth kind of a conversation they have that interest hold their interest and um and uh, yeah so <laughs> there are actually so many points that i have in mind um so uh, also yeah very very important um when uh, you get that opportunity to ask your question please have a list of questions out there because right now you don't have the luxury of going to the job site looking at the environment how the team is do you want to work with them this is your opportunity to ask them if i join your company what it's going to be like what's the first day going to be like what kind of a work i'm going to get am i going to how am i going to fit into the team what kind of procedures do you follow what are the technologies that you are using this is a very important question so write it down as as they are saying what all technologies that they are working on because i've seen there are a couple of rounds of interviews that happen it's not just one interview so the next interview you should be prepared with the technologies that they ask and always like make notes because this really really helped me i made notes and whenever the next interview came i just glanced over those notes and these were like refresher and it i it saved me a lot of time so um so have those questions ready and that also gives a perspective to the to the interviewer that he, that you are really really interested in the job and uh, there is also a concept of virtual internship that is happening nowadays so look out for those virtual internship because these are your window of opportunity that you can get into the company you get gather and garner a lot of uh, contacts and maybe and i also like when i had started with my job hunt i had uh, at that mindset that maybe i do not get the job that you know is my dream job and i might land uh, somewhere which is less than my expectations or what i am not thinking about or maybe a place also like you have to be so flexible so do that anyhow apply to all of those jobs you never know i mean you will get a good experience you will get a lot of contacts you know through these experiences so do not discount on that and um, most important please relax have a good health regime you know keep some time out to you know give relax a little have a time of your own besides the work because meditate if you can because this is so important you can get really tense up in such kind of situations and never give up on yourself you can do it and fight till the last minute that is what i will always you know advise because that is what was my mindset that i have 60 days i'm going to fight till the last day i'm going to give my 100% and don't beat up on yourself i have full faith you guys will definitely land up with a job and uh, feel free to reach out to me and i would be really really happy to help so um thank you so much i think i've taken a lot of time i don't want to take other panelists time thank you so much for giving me this opportunity forgotten i mute myself those are great tips pretty thank you so much um if this is the interview you nailed it <laughs> you really focused you know all all your talkings are to the point uh thank you so much okay uh so our next panelist is uh, justin justin i think um combined his experience in business and technology and we'll be uh, very happy to hear uh, your story sounds good thank you dr lee um and thanks for uh hosting this i think this is a really um great idea especially in the in the times that we're in so thank you for uh giving me the opportunity to share my story um first uh pretty you did a great job um 
summarizing a lot of those um, those points. Um, it's a lot of things that you don't pick up in, um, in, in school. You're going to have to kind of get that experience. And a lot of those points that Preeti were coming from is really um, experience based. So that's a good job. There was a lot of points that she shared, and I'm glad that we have this recording because a lot of those were really good points. Um, so my story um, is, uh, so I grew up here in Atlanta. I went to Valdosta State University, um, go Blazers, uh, down in um, Valdosta, Georgia, and I uh, majored in business. So I got a degree in finance and I have a degree in accounting. And um, while going to school there, I worked as a, a mathematics tutor for our Student Success Center. And I was the only um, business student who worked as a math tutor. And after I graduated, I was working for a um, security alarm company, um, a local security company down in the um, in Valdosta doing uh, accounting work for them. And I couldn't, I was trying to get back to Atlanta. I let the people at my job know like, hey, I plan to go to Atlanta once I can find a job, but I couldn't find a job. So what I did is I went to my professor at the university and I was like, hey man, this, uh, it's hard to find a job. I can't find a job in Atlanta. Do you have any advice for me? And um, he said, oh really, I know a uh, one of the guys who graduated with you, Greg Mullis, he, um, he's up in Atlanta, he's working for Coca-Cola. Maybe you should reach out to him and give him a call. It just so happened that Greg Mullis was one of the guys who I was tutoring in finance as I, um, when I was a tutor for the school and I would get together and do study groups for the class and things. And um, so I reached out to Greg, he was like, oh heck yeah. And he's like really good and really energetic. And he gave me, uh, put in a word for me at Coca-Cola and I landed my you know, first big gig out of college and I was working at Coca-Cola making $13.50 an hour, but I was in the door, that's the point. <laughs> it's not a lot of money, but I got my foot in the door. And shortly I uh, moved up, I think in the next six months, I moved up to the bracket where I like hit like the 50K mark. And then from there, I just continued to propel uh, my career with Coca-Cola. And um, the, the big, thing with Coca-Cola and the interviews and what I would advise that I think um, Preeti kind of touched on and Lauren as well is that your your resume is going to be how your your initial presentation of yourself. So you want to make sure that your resume is um, well worded. It's the correct tense in all of your bullet points and you're sticking to the tenses. Um, if you're past tense from previous jobs, keeps it in past tense. If it's present tense, keep it there for the current jobs. It's a lot of small, minute details that I'm sure Lauren and the rest of the team at KSU can help you guys with to make sure that, that, that you have a pristine resume. Also, um, one of the biggest things that helped me um, during my interviews is studying using the STAR methodology. Um, so if you go to Google and you just type in, you know, all caps S-T-A-R methodology, that's uh, it's an acronym for situation, task, action, result. And when you give that short story for your accomplishment, you kind of set the scenery for um, for what's going on and what the problem is, the action that you took. And the big thing that a lot of people don't realize is the result. If you can show um, a business that you can deliver results from a situation, that makes them um, happy and more likely to hire you. Um, so <clears throat> while I was at Coca-Cola and kind of moving up in my career, um, I landed in a role as a function analyst where I was doing a lot of reporting using um, a lot of um, Power BI inside of Microsoft Excel and just getting into like the data part of things and introducing a lot of new concepts to the rest of the team. And the director said, hey, Justin, I think it's a good idea if we send you to these Microsoft classes. And they sent me to Microsoft SQL Server classes. And this was the first time I kind of got introduced to the IT arena of things. And so I'm learning how to code SQL and I'm like, you know, what? I think I could be really good at this um, because this is coming to me naturally and I really enjoy what I was doing. So I um, moved up to another um, position um, at Coca-Cola where I was working with the corporate, uh, maintaining the corporate financial data for um, Coca-Cola corporate. And um, I had to do a lot of interaction with the IT team because we had to maintain the data tables and they speak in one language. Finance and accounting speaks in a completely different language, and I can somewhat communicate with both of them, but I was like, you know what? I think I need to learn more IT, and I think I need to go to school for IT and really bridge this connection between finance and IT because there's a clear demand for it, which is when I joined um, KSU. And joining the KSU MSIT program was the best um, decision I've made for my professional career because I would not have been in the position that I am right now if it wasn't for joining this program. So after I completed my first semester of the program and um, kind of updated my LinkedIn and put, you know, master's in IT program and put like that I completed the uh, like the foundational course, my LinkedIn started blowing up, getting inbox emails, uh, people reaching out to me saying, hey, 
uh, we have this job, this job, that job, just because I had that background in finance, but also blended with the IT as well. And um, I took another job shortly, uh, well, not shortly, but about two years after my last role, starting my last role at Coca-Cola, where they hired me as a SQL developer, essentially, for the finance department, where I was building out a cost allocation system and working with some third-party consultants to um, come in. And working with those consultants, as well as being in school and getting that experience, really kind of um, stepped my game up in coding and SQL and the entire IT arena kind of blended it all together with um, finance. So even the people internally um, in the company from the IT team were saying, hey, Justin, you should come over to IT and finance is saying, hey, Justin, stay in finance and things like that. And then I get a big call or a big message from uh, from Google and they were interested in me. And that's how I ended up stepping in that position um, about a year ago, December 2019. Um, so the key points that I'd like to make um, for you guys today, um, you know, prior to graduating is um, first be confident in the amount of effort and work that you've put into your craft. OK, I know that I've spent countless nights studying Java and SQL and doing the I don't know if you guys took a. Uh, I forgot his name. I think it was the other Dr. Lee, the Python class, where it was like, you got to do all of these different, uh, you know, epics of the iterations of, you know, doing all these different regression analysis. And it's like, this stuff is a lot to learn. You put a lot of work in your craft. So when you're in the interviews, you should know and you should be confident like, hey, I've been doing this for a long time um, and I put in a lot of work and I know what I'm talking about in the interview. So the one big thing is uh, confidence. The next thing is how you present yourself and your resume. You want to make sure that you present yourself and your resume in a clean and concise manner that helps portray the message that you want to get across to the company, which is I'm going to be one of the best hires that you've made in your life. And when I get in the door, I'm going to show you why. OK, and if that company does hire you, when you get in the door, you show them why. And if you ever have to leave that company, they should be having the conversations. Of, we don't want you to go and we'll, we're willing to offer you this much to stay because you're performing at that high of a level. Um, and uh, lastly, is um, you guys can do it. You know, you guys can do it. Just um, stay focused. Um, Pretty gave some really good advice with um, with the COVID situations. Um, I know that my LinkedIn still kind of um, blows up, so I'm sure that there are, are roles out here, but I haven't been exposed to the um, to the environment as much as Pretty has. So I, I would really take her advice and the information that she shared with you. Um, one thing that COVID did impact for me is that I was doing um, instructing job. I had an instructing uh, job on the side where I was working through a small consulting company, um, teaching SQL database classes actually. And when the COVID-19, um, when the pandemic started, that the company stopped and I don't have that role anymore. But um, I still have my main um, full-time job, which is um, good. But I know that it's really tough out here. So I'm encouraging you guys to you know, just keep going strong, be confident in yourself and um, and stick it out. And KSU is a great program with a lot of recognition. And you guys are making a, a great decision and, you know, best of luck to you in your future endeavors. So for me, Dr. Lee. I think you're on mute again. Hey, Dr. Lee. Sorry, I, I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> Thank you all so much, uh, Justin. So next uh, panelist is Stephen Ferguson. He is the CIO of the Technical College System of Georgia. So as a CIO, you must hire a lot of people uh, in IT. So could you share your thoughts and experience in, uh, from the employer uh, perspective? Absolutely, thank you, Dr. Lee. And, and really, thank you for putting this together. This is a wonderful opportunity. Uh, for students and, and, and emerging technologists, as well as those that are seasoned and, and continuing to, to uh, invest in themselves and their education uh, to really get some insight, you know, from, from folks that are, you know, new, new hires, newly, newly moved uh, in, in careers, uh, but also from a hiring perspective. And, and, I, and I have been in blessed over uh, 20 years in, in being in technical college system of having the opportunity to, to interview folks, everyone from a, from a technician, um, and, and I've been on multiple uh, panels uh, interviewing and hiring presidents of our colleges, uh, so it's been really exciting. Uh, but from a but from you know from an IT perspective, you know you, you say what what does it matter? You know what other panels and things you've been on to, of presidents and VPs and 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 directors and 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 other staff. You know the the, the big thing I want to share with you 
every hiring committee I've been on, the first thing we look for is attitude. And we have judged your attitude the second you walk in that door. And there is nothing, nothing better that you can have on your resume or, or anywhere than a great attitude. I'm not talking about a good attitude, just a great attitude. And, and because people, you know, they start thinking right away, do I want to work with this person? And, and that, that is critical. Attitude will will keep them engaged. It's going to keep folks listening. I mean, a bad attitude, the, the, the room turns off. It, you could blow the interview out of the water, you know, with your technical responses, with your knowledge, with everything you can do. And the bad attitude is going to shut it down because they, they didn't hear any of that. And so walk in and just mentally prepare yourself and know that, you know what, no matter what happens or how this goes, I'm going to have a good attitude I'm going to you know, I'm going to come in. I'm going to wow them, you know, with, with what I can do. Uh, and, and, and that's really what's going to win it. And, and I'll tell you the other thing, too, is, is we look for again, outside of just I.T., we look for motivation. You want to work with people who not only have a great attitude, but convey that they are highly motivated and they are going to give 110 percent day after day you know, to solve the challenges and ease the pain points of this organization. Because, you know, and I think it's been captured by, by the other panelists here, the interview is not about you. It's about what you can do for the employer. That's what it's about. They want they want to hear how you're going to solve their problems because they're hiring, you know, for, for a solution and somebody who come in and solve problems. And so, when you start preparing for the interview, do your research, talk to people, just interface with other people in that industry, in that, in that uh, organization, if you can, and even in that same job class, if, if possible, find out what's, what's going wrong there. Find out why they're hiring for this and, and what the big need is. And, and if you can show them that you can solve their need and come in and knock it out of the park, then, then that's going to win uh, more than anything. Now, let me go back to uh, take a couple steps back away from the, this interview and getting hired part. Let's talk about getting in the door. Now, Preet, you did a great job you know, talking about getting in the door because when we put a job out there, especially in a market like this, and, and, and things like Taleo and all these digital uh, methods for applying have made it super easy to save your resume and, and save everything out there and, and hit that apply button super fast and just you know, apply for job after job for job. Okay, there's a, there's a couple of things happen here. One, if I post a job, I'm going to have hundreds of resumes almost instantly, almost instantly. They're going to come in in, in, in a couple of days. And there's going to be some of the trickle in after that. Let me tell you something about all those resumes coming in. They are not most likely, I can't speak for everybody, but in general speaking, 90% of those resumes are never going to get read. Not by a human. They're going to get filtered out by a bot because that bot's going to score the questions you answered and the resume you attached. It's going to be looking for keywords. It's going to be looking for experience and it's going to be looking for, you know, the things that you checked off that were requirements in that application. Now don't ever lie. Don't ever lie and say that you have something you don't because that that's even worse than, you know, not getting an interview. That gets you a bad reputation. Your reputation does precede you. People talk, and, and and I have friends who hire all the time and will ask me, hey, do you know so-and-so? Have you ever, you know, they, they reach out to your references, but they reach out to the community too. And so don't, don't, don't lie on something, but, you know, be truthful. But if you can't say yes to everything, it's going to filter you. If there are requirements, it's going to filter you out before a human ever sees it. That doesn't mean you're not qualified. That means the requirements they've set for that job are going to filter you out. Does that mean you can't get in? No, it doesn't. That's where relationships pay a big dividend. And that's where if you don't yet have a lot of experience, because a lot of those qualifiers are going to be experience related. And do you know about this? And do you know about this? And, and a lot of times those are not written by practitioners. They're oftentimes written by somebody in HR who took the job description they were given by the hiring manager in the department and tried to bowl out as much as they can. 
rarely will those ever actually get back to the hiring manager and will they be qualified and, and going, no, 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 I didn't mean that. You know, this is what I really need. They're done by HR and they're doing the best job they can. And that communication, it's not that they don't want it to happen. It just doesn't always happen. And so you'll get filtered out. This is where those relationships happen. And so knowing people in the industry, networking, and, and, and again, having that outstanding attitude are going to go a long way. Because let's say that you came in at, at that entry level position, $13.50 an hour, you know, l- like our other panelists here. You know, he, he humbled himself to get in the door. But then his skills, his determination, that grit is really what moved him forward. And it was all those relationships made along the way. And the people going, man, I love working with that guy. Yeah, hire him. Hire him. Move him over here. We want him in our department. We want him. And, and he got valuable experience. That, By the way, fintech is hot. I mean, and, and you see that. I mean, people fighting over him. And, and so, you know, the, the, that valuable experience he got just by taking that first leap and going, hey, this isn't the job I want right now, but it gets me that foot in the door and I'm going to show them what I can do. I'm going to make I'm going to make friends. I'm going to build connections. And, and pretty, you know, the, the, the positions you stepped into, you're, you even said it. It was part of building that networking, building those relationships so that you had an opportunity later. That's that's investing in those relationships is it's worth every penny of, of time and missed opportunity. It's like investing in your education. And, and, you know, you're investing in your education right now and you're investing in the future. If you don't have job experience today, do anything you can to get that experience. Humble yourself if you have to. Go take a lower paying, lesser job than what you are, are, are destined for to get the experience and make the connections because that's going to pay dividends down the road. This master's degree and this program you're working on, that's going to be a gatekeeper later. It may not be a gatekeeper on your first job, but that master's, the higher you go, it's going to keep the, the, the level of education you need is going to keep creeping up. And you're going to be able to check that box time after time after time. And when it comes down to making a decision, and let's say there's there's candidates that are tied, attitude's going to come in, that that resourcefulness and that that grit and determination, that that really that self-starting person that has the motivation, that's going to come in. Education is going to come in too. You, you, we're going to go back and look, and, and I look at this often because if I've got if I've got a pool of candidates and I'm trying to weed them out, and, and by the way, when we're hiring, that's the first thing we do. It, let's say that we had 200, 200 resumes, and, and the AI took care of its job, and it it kicked out all but forty. Well, then then HR is going to manually review those and make sure they meet the qualifications, and maybe there's thirty left, and so they send thirty over to me and the team. The first thing we look is not who we want out of that thirty. We look at which ones get eliminated, and you're looking for the you're looking for the best of the best. And you know what one of my key differentiator is? Education. How much did you invest in trying to get to this job? Because that shows that they're motivated, they're determined, and they can actually put in the work to accomplish something. Getting your master's is like doing a massive multi-year project. Do you have the determination to finish the job? And, and that's what this is about. And so that education qualifier, that's one of those, that's one of those things that'll get you across the finish line. And, and all hiring managers are looking like that. They're, you know, we're, we're we're typically not going to interview 30 people. You're going to narrow it down to maybe 10, five. You know, you're going to have a number you're looking for that, hey, let's bring in five. Now, we're pretty picky when we hire. We do, you know, I, I've never taken a, a, a cohort of, of folks to hire and said, you know what? We're hiring one of those 10. We'll go fish again. If that ten doesn't work out, I'm gonna go back to the pile. Some of the best hires we've had came in round two or round three of of searching for somebody. And so that say that because I I want to say don't give up. Just because you didn't you know hear back or you didn't get a response doesn't mean that you're not qualified and don't have an opportunity because that job posting goes back out sometimes. If you didn't get picked the first time and it's back out there, a human may have never seen it. Could have been a bot that filtered you out. Modify your resume, customize it, talk to people internally, find out what they're looking for, and figure out how you can you know, get across that finish line. Customize your resume to the job. Don't be one of those people that loads it up on Taleo or loads it up on Glassdoor 
and just hits apply to everything and send the same resume. That'll get you filtered out on my side. Even if you make it through the bot, if you make it through HR, if this is a boilerplate resume and it's not tailored to me and, and, and the job we have, it's out. You didn't put in the effort. It's out. And, and so you, you got misspellings, like you said earlier, and, and bad punctuation, and you didn't put the effort in reviewing it. It's out. It, it goes out right away. So get people to review your resume, too. The last thing I want to leave you with, practice. You can even do practice interviews. You can do real-life practice interviews. I've got, I've got friends who applied for jobs. They didn't want to land. And in those efforts, hang on one second. Hey, excuse me. Um, I've got friends that, that, have, that have applied for positions that they, you know, they were getting practice, right, to go through the motions of, of trying to, to calm the nerves and tell your story. Guess what it's really about is how you're going to tell that story about how hiring you is going to be the best decision this company can make. And, and you're going to solve their pain and you're going to do even more. You're going, you're going to exceed their expectations. And so, you know, spend some time getting that experience. Go interview with your friends. Find somebody. Go to career services, wherever you can. Do those mock interviews. Get critical feedback and adjust your story. Adjust it to the situation. And, and like, like you said earlier, you know, knock it out of the park. Exceed their expectations every single time and you'll win. All right. That's what I got, Dr. Lee. Thank you for letting me talk. This is this is awesome. It's good for the students. Can't wait to get questions. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Stephen. This is a great advice again. Uh, you are certainly a uh, wonderful ambassador for our program. OK, uh, so we have two panelists left. Uh, I think they, they are going to work at a team because they are from the same company. So. Uh, Tamara, you want to go first? Yes, I can go first. Can you guys hear me okay? Yes, we can. Okay. Well, first and foremost, thank you so much, Dr. Lee, for inviting me and my colleague Sabrina to come sit on this panel to, to, to discuss career development. Um, my name is Tamara Johnson. I graduated last December from Kennesaw State from the MSIT program, and I ended up getting a concentration in security. A little bit of background about myself. Um, I, like Justin, we graduated from Boston State University. <laughs> and um, so I got my degree, my undergrad in organizational leadership. So kind of had the same situation, kind of, you know, when it came to the job hunt, it was a little difficult. But around 2013, I'm sure you guys remember this, um, Target had this huge data breach around between Thanksgiving and Christmas. And that kind of like sparked the interest in me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to be one of those people that catch the bad guys. Like that kind of intrigued me a lot. So I was like, okay, so I'm still continuing to do my research. Um, and, um, and eventually I came to the MSIT program and I was introduced and I was just like, this is a great program. I didn't have a strong IT, pro um, IT background coming into the program. So what I had to do when it came to interviews, these courses, these different projects, the capstone, I was that gave me leverage when it came to interviewing because I was ex able to explain a project from the beginning, the middle, the end, the deliverables, the goals. Um, so that really helped when it came to the interviewing recruiting process. Again, I've been in everyone's shoes when it comes like about a year or two ago when it comes to finding a job and you want to be able to find a job by the time you graduate kind of thing. So one of the things that I recommend and what I feel like really truly helped me was setting an appointment up with the career, the career center. Um, so like, was it Lauren? Lauren? I think it was Lauren. Yeah. So kind of, um, so basically I set up uh, an appointment with them and they basically went over my resume and told me to change this, told me to change that. And so that really, really helped me connecting with Dr. Lee. Dr. Lee will always post um, internships. And so I was able to kind of get ahead like, okay, like somebody needs an intern or this and that. So I feel like KSU has so many resources and it's so important that we utilize those resources and i feel like most of them are free so i feel like you have these at these resources at your fingertips so i feel like just make sure you utilize those um another thing that i recommend is getting your linkedin up up to up to par 
about a year or two ago, I probably wasn't unsure what LinkedIn was like, OK, I know it's not Facebook. I know it's not Instagram, but it's it's more for career wise. And I know when I took my capstone class with Dr. Lee, that was one of the requirements is like building up your LinkedIn. And so from there, I was like, OK, building up my LinkedIn. And before I started with Deloitte, um, I was actually researching Deloitte prior to. So one thing that I recommend is research the organization that you're interested in prior to. So what I ended up doing was not only start a network with people who worked at Deloitte on LinkedIn, but I was following them on LinkedIn. I was able to see if they were having a virtual hiring event. If um, so, I would just kind of like look and see like who you know who's posting something, so I kind of know what's going on, or if they're just posting things in general. Like I would see like Deloitte's in the top um, Fortune 100, so that was kind of like oh that kind of treats me a little more. And also before I started working with Deloitte, I started following them on Instagram, <laughs> and I was uh, I'm always kind of been interested in artificial intelligence, so they're really big on that, and also. Um, just seeing what other innovations they had on posting on social media. So um, that was really cool. And not only what I was seeing what they're doing internally with Deloitte, but I was also able to see the see what they're doing externally. So doing different outreaches and everything like that. So um, so that really kind of helped. And when it came to the interviewing process for me, I reached out to a recruiter on LinkedIn and that kind of helped me um, go through the, the hiring, the recruiting process. So just kind of making that network and making that connection. Um, and during that time, I was also able to just research, not only research more about Deloitte, but when it came to interviewing, I researched a company. So make sure before you do the interview, research the company. Um, so that when it, so that way, when it came to interviewing, you're like, hey, I know you guys are big on this, that, 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 like you're listing things and they're like, oh, OK, you, you, you are, you know, you've done your research. So that's something that I definitely recommend. Um, and another thing is just staying, um, just continue to stay consistent. I know there's going to be times where you might have a big lead and something might turn around or do something, you know, and you don't hear back or whatever, but just it's OK. Stay consistent. Like the biggest thing that you guys are doing is that you're investing in your education. You have the knowledge, you have the skill set. So don't forget that. Um, and I know for me, kind of like what um, Justin was saying, some of these classes I'd be investing, like I think it was design studio. <laughs> so we had to really invest, like I invested in a tutor. I'm like, I'm going to learn this coding. I am going to do this or whatever. So just remember, this is an investment and it's going to pay off. That's kind of um, my thing. Um, another thing I will say is just, Whenever you have downtime, just continue to make sure your resume is up to date. Work on your skills. Um, before I started with Deloitte, I had a little bit of downtime where I was just going over my skills, um, going over different learning materials, because one day my goal is I want to take my CISP. I want to be you know, certified. And so I'm just going over different educational just materials regarding that. And so that way it prepares. So continue to invest in yourself even after you graduate. Update your skills. And I'm trying to see if there's anything else. And like I said, you have Dr. Lee, you got the Career Center. So make sure you use those, um, utilize those resources right there and connect with people on LinkedIn, research before an interview, research the organization, what they're big on. So that way, you know, when it comes to interviewing, you you can, you know, they can see that you really are interested in, in their company, their organization. And other than that, I think that's it. I'm going to get ready. Like I said, Sabrina, thank you so much for, for joining me today. Um, I'm going to get ready to pass it to Sabrina. Sabrina is one of my cyber risk managers at Deloitte. And um, and I don't know, did I even say what I, oh yeah, I'm a cyber risk advisor analyst at Deloitte too. So I meant to, I don't know if I just went, jumped in and dived in, but, um, but I'm going to go pass it to her. I'm sure she has great tips and advice when it comes to career development. Sabrina, it is all yours. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Lee, for inviting me. I know that I am not a alumni um, from KSU, but I am coming from Georgia State and we are pretty similar. Hopefully you guys will kill me for saying that. Um, but just wanted to, again, thank you guys all for joining. Um, my is, I didn't know what I wanted to do uh, when I was in college. I do have an undergrad degree. I'm always considering going back for a master's or MBA, but honestly, I wanted to stay true to who I am. Um, everybody gave great advice. Of course, it's not going to change from my advice to what others have said on the call, so I want to echo that. Stay true to who you are. 
it's all about the people. It's all about networking and meeting other individuals. Everybody's story in the hiring process is very, very unique and different. For example, you've heard somebody just reach out to a recruiter just on LinkedIn without knowing that person. Um, similarly, my story is a little different. I got bored at my prior company. I was there for two years and I literally started knocking on Deloitte, uh, Deloitte's door. I have family friends that work there and I'm like, I'm bored. What do I do? Where do I go? Um, you know, I wasn't even interested in Deloitte. It was just, I was having a venting session and all of a sudden I'm on the beach and I get a phone call from Deloitte saying, Hey, we're about to start your interview process. And in my mind, I'm like, wait, what is happening? What is going on? I didn't even know I was in the interview process or in the running. Um, again, it, it's almost going back to being grateful and being lucky of having that opportunity. But the only reason why I got that opportunity was because of my networking skills. Um, it goes back to some of the other panelists and how they said that, okay, it's a great attitude. The moment you walk into the door and or the moment you start connecting with people, they're not going to remember everything that you say as individuals as humans we meet over 500 people a day if that pre-covid uh, but in the interview process or when you're recruiting at schools or just in general we do meet a lot of people from students to clients to our co-workers and with that being said you have to be creative to think of ways to make yourself stand out one of the things that I did when I was in school and interviewing, I was like, my job isn't to bore them with why I want to work with their or for their company. My job isn't to talk about myself. It's supposed to be a dialogue, a conversation, and to also, in my mind, be silly by saying, okay, I want to make them laugh. In order to get me comfortable and or in order for me to know that I had a good interview is to be memorable. And in order to be memorable, let's just say a joke or let's talk about something that they can remember at the end of the interview after having 20 candidates plus or minus ahead or after me. So that's one of the major tips that I always gave myself as well as to others uh, in the recruiting process. And trust me, for the last six years being at Deloitte and recruiting other individuals and doing the interview process, I actually remember that or I want to see who is memorable. Aside from having a great attitude, aside from um, the willingness to work, aside from you know not being that robot and being so prepared, it's I get at the end of the day, your person. And in order to be a person, just talk to me like I am another person. Um, so a little bit about my story, as well as a few tips here and there. I know that it's 710 or 707, and I don't want to not give you guys the opportunity to ask questions. Um, so Dr. Lee, is there anything that you specifically want me to focus on before we open up to the question, uh, question and answer or uh, no, you go for it. Okay. Uh, if, if you guys want, we could open it up. Um, up okay. to you. Yeah. However you guys want to. Okay. That's fine. Before we open up for question and answers, uh, I just want to add one, um, one more tip by watching, uh, Sabrina and, uh, Tamara talking. So when you do the interview, have a big smile. <laughs> That's going to help a lot. You have to be memorable. Trust me. It's either a joke, a laugh, a smile. Like, don't get me wrong. Of course, we are judging. And of course, we look at you head to toe. And we're like, okay, do you have proper shoes? Do you have the proper professional attire? In all honesty, and the way Deloitte has trained us is, okay, are you going to be the face of Deloitte? Can I put you in front of my client without getting embarrassed? Can I put you in front of my client and can you articulate what we need you to do? And or can you actually build that rapport with somebody so you can continue having business and we can make revenue off of that? And so those skill sets, of course, you don't learn in school, but then also you have to take a step back how you treat your family members, how you treat any type of relationship, even dating. It's literally it's the, the same practice or principles apply to your job. So have that in mind uh, while you're interviewing and or while you're like, you know, just networking and meeting people. Yes, that is so true. Uh, thank you so much for all our panelists. Uh, I think we have 20 minutes left. Uh, let's not waste any time. Let's let me open up the floor for questions. So if you have a question, you can either raise your hand by clicking on the button on the screen or to type in, in the chat box. 
you can ask a general question to all panelists or to a specific panelist. Either way is fine. All right, I guess our student does not have their question prepared. <laughs> Which is another key tip, if I may add. Um, it's funny when I try preparing other students for interviews, one of the things that I do ask is please do not ask the same redundant question, similar to what was said by Brittany earlier. You don't want to ask, oh, so what do you like to do for fun or what are you doing over the weekend? Um, but then you also don't want to ask like silly questions that you can find on LinkedIn, like, oh, what's your title? How long have you been at the firm? Um, one of the creative questions that I've always asked is, look, I get that you've been at the firm for, let's say, 20 years, but what are some of the things that you hate about the firm? And everybody always laughed at me when I asked that question because that's a bold question. Like, I'm trying to get a job, let's say, for Deloitte, but I'm asking what you hate about that um, or what you hate about the company. But again, it goes back to my authentic self and also being a person. Of course, we all don't like our jobs at times. And of course, you know, there's pros and cons to every job. That's not going to change if I decide to move or jump ship from Deloitte to Ernst & Young or PwC. But at the end of the day, having these prepared questions, it actually helps because it showcases how your thought process is and it showcases how much you want to know about that person um, that you're that you're being interviewed by. Uh, so, to Dr. Yes, uh, point, we have our Actually, we have a question to all panelists. Uh, so this from Anna. Um, so Anna currently is account manager, and um, the Anna is expecting a raise before graduate. Um, so she wants to know if it is worth to take a pay cut to get an IT experience. Uh, so basically, specifically to get a pay card to get an entry level IT experience. So, so I'll fill that one first and, and I'll say that that's really up to you. It, it depends on what your goals are, right? And so you, you need to map out your long-term goal is to be in a particular area of IT that, that's going to require some deep experience. And, you know, and I tell all the, the master students I talked to in the past that, you know, if, you, if, you're, if your goal is to be a director or a senior level person or a CIO or something, you know, and, and, you, and you have sales experience, you do need to get the other side. And so it's going to be up to your unique financial situation and, and, and where you are. But, but what I can tell you is, is that don't, don't think of it like a pay cut and don't say yourself short. Don't think you have to take a large pay cut. You know, look around, look at opportunities and see what's available. Um, but but you know, consider it an investment, not a cut. And, uh, you know, because we, we do get hung up oftentimes on uh, the amount uh, of salary and kind of tie that or tie that to our identity. If you're negotiating, there, there are other things sometimes that are worth more than pay. Uh, one of the panelists here, you know, instead of being out in Silicon Valley, is living here but working for Google. I mean, that, that's that's a huge. There, there's a huge cost benefit of living here versus there. So don't don't just think about that number. Look at what else is on the table as, as a complete part of that package. Uh, before you think you're taking a, a, a cut, but but experience, yes, experience in the field you're trying to get to is going to be critical to your long-term success. So a little short-term pain may pay off big in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I'll I'll um, I'll uh, second um, Stephen, um, and I'll say that it, it's it's hard to um, know. Um, like the the question says, how do I know? And I mean, really, you you don't you can't know really, right? But if it's in line with your long-term plan, then I think you should highly um, consider if it's worth the investment. When I was growing up, there is a rule, um, or not even a rule, but there is always like this theme um, that set home for me or that set really well with me. Don't chase money. Um, if you're good at what you do, if you're brilliant, if you're smart, if you make sure you put 110% into your work or anything in life, uh, daily, as best as you can, well, then the money will come. Um, at the very beginning of this whole career um, development, when I was a sophomore in college, I was urged to get internships. Nobody wanted me because, again, I was just a sophomore. 
in the big four. Everybody was looking at, you know, experienced students or like juniors and seniors at the time. And um, fast forward, I then just landed a job that didn't pay me anything. It was unpaid, but I still went every day, worked 40, 45 hours a week. And that was literally the start of my career of trying to network and get to know people. Um, I get that we're in rough times and I get that COVID is happening and we all desire to have more money. We all want more money and we want more things. But again, the, the choice of what you're making, it has to come from within and it's your own opinion. So I would almost do a pros and cons list, list out all your expenses, see if you can afford it with the pay cut air quote. Sorry, I know I shouldn't use that word, but, um, you know, the cut versus if you stick with the job that you're currently at. And if you could do it and if it makes sense to you and makes you happy, go for it. If it doesn't and you know that you're not going to feel that satisfaction, well, then don't do it. So that would be my two senses if that helps. That, that's a great sense. I, I want to add one more thing there too. Happiness and enjoying what you do is, is way more important. I, I, and I, I'll say that in the last 20 years of being here, I haven't worked, right? I've enjoyed what I've done. I mean, it's been, a, it's been an honor to do what I do. I haven't, I haven't ever thought about it as work. There was a job I took before this one. I chased money. I went and doubled my salary. Two months in, I was looking for a job. It took me about four months to come here, but that was that was the chasing money scenario. It wasn't worth it. And I took a pay cut to go to a job I've enjoyed ever since. And that has also paid dividends where I enjoyed it, I performed, and and, and the money came. And, and so keep keep that in mind too. That I, I love that. Don't chase money. I was gonna say um, kind of like what. Um, Steven and Sabrina was saying for me before I started prior to um, working with Deloitte, I was working for another um, company and just working part time hourly. It was IT related. So but my purpose was working with it was to build my experience because I know it's going to pay off and it did. So just remember, um, just remember that um, as well, like everything that you're going to, you know, that you're doing kind of like what Sabrina was saying, have a list of, you know, your bills or whatever, see what you can. Um, but I, I, again, you're investing in yourself. So, um, so, and like I said, in the, in the end, I believe it'll, it'll pay off, but again, you just want to make sure like, what are you comfortable with? Um, there's so many different aspects, but, um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, all the panelists. Um, any other questions? Raise your hand. Feel free to uh, speak up. If you want to find a job, you should be free to talk. <laughs> There's another good a a a anecdote here. At the end of an interview, when it comes to your opportunity to ask a question, always have at least one, if not two, insightful questions. Even if you didn't walk in the door, they've already answered them. You know, think about something that, that an interviewer said, follow up on it, make that connection. People love to hear their words come back mm -hmm. around, their thoughts come back around. They, they realize you paid attention, you, you were listening, you were connecting. So ask insight, always ask a question. Uh, I don't know that I've ever hired someone who at the end of the interview, and I said, well, you know, that, that's it from us. Uh, you know, is there, are there any questions you have for the, and they're like, no, no, I think you answered them all. I don't think I've ever <laughs> called that person back. I can't think of a time we did. Yes, exactly. I have the same experience. Um, I, I have done a few hirings myself. Um, yeah, that's really true. That just shows that person is really care about the position, care about organization or not. Um, so while we're waiting for our audience to come up with questions, I, I do have one is pandemic related. So right now, all the interview I imagine is going virtual. And I think our panelists all already touched on a little bit, but uh, can you just be um, talk a little bit more about um, doing an interview through, uh, let's say, Microsoft Teams or other means? How is it different from face to face and anything that the student need to pay attention to? Have good internet. Sorry. <laughs> so, with good internet. Have a solid experience. Know what you're doing beforehand and make sure it sounds good. Make sure they can clearly hear you. Make sure they can clearly see you. 
Make sure that you know you don't have something embarrassing in your background. Don't use a virtual background because then everybody's going to wonder, you know, what is really there? Where are you really at? Yeah, I think I think all of that is um, really good advice. I, I would say, like, if, if you're doing a, um, a, a virtual interview, I wouldn't have a background like how I have right now. <laughs> interview. I would, um, and actually, when I, when I was interviewing with Google, since Google is out in um, California and I'm here in Atlanta, prior to the pandemic, all of my interviews were virtual with Google. And I used a, um, I used a room upstairs where it was a clear background, dress nice, um, you know, suit and everything like that, even though it's not required for Google, but I was still, you know, wear it to, to look presentable. And of course, test out your sound and stuff prior to the interview. So absolutely. Yeah, all of the points that, uh, that Steven touched on, I second that. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, by the way, I also like to introduce uh, Professor Don Taylor. She is our uh, CCSE uh, industry partner uh, manager, and uh, she has a lot of experience interact with companies, uh, helping a student getting jobs. So she's another great resources uh, if you want to get a job or internship. Hi. Uh, so Don, you want the uh, step in, uh, just say a few words. Hi, thanks, uh, Dr. Lee. Yeah, I'll just say hello and introduce myself. I also have over 25 years of experience in, in, in the IT industry, working up in New York City and also down in the South, consulting and doing just a, a little bit of everything uh, before I came to academia. So um, a lot of times what I will do with students is um, introduce you to the contacts that we have uh, via email and in networking events that we have and we host at the college. So any way that I can help, please feel free to reach out and let me know. Um, I'm another resource for you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Don. Um, we have two questions from the audience. Um, one is from uh, Valerie. Her, she has two questions. One is, do you have any tips uh, about evaluating whether an opportunity is a good fit or not? And um, any advice would you give to an older uh, job seeker? Anyone want to take on this? Um, Valerie, I can actually touch on the first question, um, and I was actually going to just uh, type it in the chat window, but um, it sounds cheesy, but it's the people in the culture. Um, I had the opportunity to interview with over like 10 companies when I was in college, and with that, in order to cross them off my list, I go back to my handy dandy pros and cons list. And it all came down to who I was interviewing with, how they treated me as a human being, how they looked at me as a human. Um, and so it is really the people and the people that actually are around that environment. You're working with them over eight to 10, sometimes 12, 15 hour days. And so you want to be able to connect with them. You want to be able to be professional, but still have that personal connection by being able to bend or be true to yourself. Um, so that's one. And then second, it's the culture. Um, you want to stand by, okay, what, um, let's say if you, you're highly involved in any nonprofit organizations, um, if, if your company, if that's your desire, first of all, well, then if your company is following that trade, of course, go after that. Um, along with, okay, is diversity a big thing? Um, I'm a female and I'm Indian, so I want to make sure that my company allows for diversity. I care about that and I want to make sure that there are a, enough female practitioners within our cyber practice. Um, so those are some of the common themes that I cared for to evaluate whether a company was a good fit or not. Hopefully that helps. I would like to also add in here, Sabrina covered a lot. Uh, what I also wanted to uh, cover, uh, another thing is that since it's a work environment, you don't get to go to the job site in order to look at who you will be working with and who all you will be working with. You don't get the job tours, uh, office tours that you usually get when you go to the site. So here is your home that you need to ask a lot of questions from which you can gauge the kind of environment that you could be dealing with. The kind of people that you could be dealing with. This is very, very important because 
this is new. Uh, pretty, your your voice is in and out. In I and think out? you probably have bad connection. Oh, okay, okay. So now maybe it's better. I'll... now you're back. It's better. Okay. Yeah. So um, so yeah, that's what I was touching uh, on. That um, we need to ask a lot of questions in order to gauge like what kind of uh, environment is there, what kind of teammates that you would be working with, what is the culture because. These were the questions that actually um, I faced. Um, I, I used to ask a lot of questions like this and I would get a fair amount of idea like what kind of uh, work culture I would be faced with because um, once um, like when I was actively interviewing, I got the offer for Home Depot and I got an offer from another two companies. And even though they told me that we are going to uh, pay you more than what Home Depot is offering you right now, um, my bent of mind was not to go towards the money. I liked the culture that I had gauged through the questions that I had asked in the interview. So it was my personal decision to go with Home Depot and choose that. So very, very important to ask a lot of questions. Um, because that gives you a lot of clarity and uh, you won't beat up on yourself later. Like you would be at peace. You would know what you're going to work at. Like Steven also touched on that. Like if the work environment is not, like you're not happy in there. So any amount of money will not get you happiness. So very, very important to ask a lot of questions. So, and they're eager to answer you too. And it's so very important in this virtual environment. So do, have a list of questions ready for them. I, I want to touch on the question. I want to touch on the question of, of what to do if you're if you're an older uh, person seeking employment. Um, I, I think there's two big things here uh, because there's a, there's a misconception, especially in technology, you know, that youth is preferred. And, and I think that's a that's a huge misconception because it's not that youth is preferred. What people are looking for is flexibility. And, and if if you're if you if you think that you know because you're older you're you're at a disadvantage you know, you, you got to dispel that myth in your own mind because you you have years of experience and I, and I was once the younger person and have become the older person now you got the years of experience that the youth you know can't match so so go to the employers and show them that your experience is important show them that you ha have upskilled yourself you've learned. Oh, the new technologies and that you're not afraid of change and you're not afraid of of, you know, th this agile, you know, DevOps type environment that we come into and in, in, in kind of modern technologies that you actually embrace that and you're that you're willing to help uh, those those younger folks and maybe those those junior uh, engineers and programmers and things uh, actually actually learn the skills that you have, because I'll tell you that that one thing that that comes with experience is going to be confidence, uh, but it's also going to be all those people skills and, and the politics that you've learned to navigate that really can only be gained with years of experience and, and being able to take those those younger folks under your wing and, and being able to take the junior staff under your wing and, and show them the ropes in those areas is really, really beneficial and, and is, is going to be you know a, a big um, uh, incentive for a company to hire you. So, so don't think that's a disadvantage. I, I see it as a huge advantage uh, for you and your favor. Uh, and so don't don't ever go into the mindset that I have disadvantages when you walk in the door. You know, turn everything to your advantage. Thank you, Steven. Um, so we are we only have two minutes left. Let's make sure that all the questions being answered. So we have one from uh, Svea. Um, so her question have two parts. One is about knowledge uh, skill set if you want to be in cybersecurity. And Sabrina, I think, answered in the chat box. Um, I think that's pretty comprehensive. Uh, another question is about, um, let's see. Um, any suggestions, tips on new graduate student who want to start a career in security? So, any anything from the uh, panelists? 
I'll, I'll say something um, like for me, I knew since I concentrated and I don't know if I was right, what year, not year, but if you're getting close to graduation or if you're just starting the program or not. Um, I know for me, like before I started the MSIT program, well, while starting the MSIT, I was trying to figure out which direction I wanted to go. And I knew security was where I wanted to be in or I wanted to go that route. So taking security courses, um, I think it was one class, one course really helped me and specifically, and I kind of learned a good skill was, uh, I think it was defense, infrastructure defense. Dr. Lee, is that a class still? Yeah. So we had to come up with, like, it was like a real life scenario where we had to create, um, we kind of had to come in as consultants for, um, it was like this company called, I think it was like Japan or Tokyo account. It was something, but they were, um, but long story short, but they were trying to expand and they needed, they just had the basic security standard. And so while doing this project, we were able to kind of help implement like Wireshark, um, just using different resources of what they need um, to kind of help implement a safer measures um, for, I guess, for the, the organization since they are expanding. So, so something like just basically getting these skills down of these different platforms that are used within security and knowing which area you want to go into. Um, for me, like uh, Deloitte has an a big advisory practice within advisory, there's cyber. And with cyber, I deal with identity. So I work with identity access management. I work with privilege access management. Management. Not only we are verifying who you are, but we're also making sure that you got the right roles and privileges assigned to you. So knowing, and um, and I love it, I love this field. So um, so just knowing what area specifically you wanna go in, do you wanna deal with network? Do you wanna deal with the, the coding? Do you wanna do a penetration testing? There's so many different layers in security. So just figuring out which one, which area you really wanna be in, um, I think that it's great. And um, and it's a, it, it's high in demand, cyber is, so, or uh, security. Um, so just keep that in mind. And for me, like I said, my end goal will be I want to get my sis. So just making sure when you're researching or, or what you want to try to area do, just like what certifications you can get in or um, or yeah. So but I think Sabrina nailed it on the hill, nailed it on the head <laughs> with the answer. Yes, and also one more thing I like to add is speaking of networking. Oh, go ahead. Go, go ahead, Stephen. I just want to say, uh, actually, uh, Professor Tatum developed that infrastructure defense course. So um, what Tamara said will make uh, Don very happy. <laughs> All right, go ahead, Stephen. Sorry. No, I, I was going to say, speaking of networking, Tamara, uh, Dr. Lee, connect the two of us. I want to talk to you. I want to pick your brain on identity a little bit. So uh, let, let's connect sometime this week or next. Uh, sure. Um, I think we are running out of time uh, just to respect everyone's time. So let, let's just call uh, for the day. But if you have further questions you want to get in touch with the panelists, uh, please reach out to me. I don't want to share that information publicly right now um, to re respect their privacy. So any additional questions, feel free uh, to send it to me. I'm going to uh, forwarded to our panelists, they can um, uh, further answer your questions. But before we close, I want just want to say a big thank you to our panelists tonight. Um, really invest your time, um, take time off from your busy schedule. This is an hour and a half, and in the evening before the dinner, it's not easy. Uh, so really, really appreciate your time and your effort, your willingness to help out your fellow student. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Thank you Dr. Lee. Thank you, Dr. Lee. Uh, all right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. So far, good night. Good night. Thanks. Bye-bye.